Hey guys, it's been way too hot to work outside um, and too humid. It's like 90% humidity outside, raining just about every day. And uh, I think the heat index is like 105 or something. It's way up there. So I've been kind of like sticking projects like planning and uh, I got a little experimental computer uh, idea going on. This is a uh, like a chart plotter and um, sensors for the boat. It's uh, like a little computer for the boat. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi 3 B+, which means it has Bluetooth, and it's got Wi-Fi, and it's got Ethernet connection, a bunch of USB ports. <clears throat> and what I've done, is I've uh, rigged up a bunch of sensors. Like this is a uh, barometer. This is a compass. A compass right there. And I've got a GPS module plugged in. And I've got a software-defined radio. Um, this is all new to me. Uh, I did use this uh, GPS on my uh, one of my one of my drones, you know, my little RC drone. So I, I kind of repurposed it for this this purpose. But it's a little um, thirty-five dollar computer and runs on really low power. It's like uh, runs on five volts. And I've downloaded some software. This is probably not going to come out. I'm going to have to switch to my computer to record this. But um, it's from. Uh, Sail log. It's an uh, open plotter, and it's an open source platform, and does all kinds of really cool stuff. So um, let me uh, switch over to my computer and, and uh, demonstrate it for you. All right, guys. The, uh, the website is uh, sailoog.com. Uh, that's where you'll find this uh, free open source software. These guys are developing it. They just got it to work on the Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus. Uh, before it would work on the regular ra Raspberry Pi 3, and uh, now they've got it working with uh, the B Plus, the, the best one that's out right now. Uh, this is all the stuff it does. I mean, it's just a ton of stuff. I'm learning as I go, but um, I've got it configured up to read sensors and uh, and do a lot of stuff. The coolest thing about this is you can download uh, you know charts and be able to navigate water uh, just like you do with some expensive equipment. And this also has a built-in autopilot that's one of the really cool things about it and you can download um, you know charts for weather and stuff like that just like the like the big boys do with the expensive hardware and everything and for a total investment of less than fifty dollars you can you can have something that you can uh, you know check the weather with you can uh, check current uh, conditions of tides um, winds you can uh, you know, be able to navigate uh, open waters so I'm learning as I go right here. I just wanted to share this with you guys. So I'm, I'm no expert on this by any ways, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I was up to. Uh, really into this because of the um, the autopilot. All right, guys, this is the uh, program actually running um, on the Raspberry Pi. And um, you can run it two different ways. You can run it with a monitor attached through like a HDMI connection, or you can run it as a headless system where um, you use a program called VNC, which is what I'm doing, and you can uh, remotely access it from, say, like a um, Android uh, or any kind of tablet, or um, you can access it from a PC, like I'm running it on my PC right now, and it's actually like a window looking at the computer, and it, it makes it so you can remotely access it, and uh, which is really nice to have on a boat because you can just have a, um, a wireless device and walk around with it and be able to access uh, this program here. Um, you can go in here. This is the open plotter configuration where you can, uh, can set up all your sensors. You can uh, configure. Uh, there's a program called OpenCPN, and that's uh, the chart plotter. I don't know exactly what it stands for, but that's the one you actually can download the charts and, and view the charts and everything. But it's got all kinds of features, uh, tons of networking features. Here's where I have my uh, GPS uh, configured to read my GPS uh, sensor. Um, it's got something called KPlex. I'm just learning about that. It's a, a program called Pi Pilot. This is the autopilot program, and I've got the I got my compass set up on that. There's all kinds of other stuff you can do, and um, I'm still learning about this as I go. By the way, so I won't be able to describe and tell you everything about it or anything. And they are also, you know, uh, always modifying this and making it better. So um, I'm really here to learn. I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, all the cool stuff and all the all the neat features here. Some uh, serial connections for the uh, like a pressure sensor, uh, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, all that stuff. 
I've got wired in. So uh, really, really cool stuff. Let me uh, let me give you a demonstration of. First of all, here is the. Uh, if you want to grab some current weather, you open this uh, ZY Grid file, Grid file viewer. Um, I've just been experimenting with it, and I just uh, I'm just kind of like barely scratching the surface, and not an expert at this by any uh, means. I just wanted to to share this with you guys. But here's where I downloaded uh, like the current weather, and just like over Georgia, um, it'll show you like the temperatures it'll show you uh, if, you know whether it's going to rain these are current uh, wind conditions you got a little slide down here where you can you know check it for like sunday and it'll it'll change and show you you know exactly what the, the conditions are going to be you can even um i think automate it make like a uh, a little animation but this shows you like a maybe a week's worth of what the weather is going to look like and how it's going to change I thought this was really cool. Here's the uh, example of uh, the chart plotter at work. It's a little slow. I think that I have to do some fine tuning on it to make it work correctly. But uh, you kind of get the idea of what it's capable of. Um, got the ability to uh, turn on the weather. Shows the wind direction. And uh, you can turn on the, uh, like, Rainfall, expected rainfall, and it should show up on the map. I think it should run a lot faster than it is. Um, there's something I need to do to fine tune it because I've seen it run faster. Maybe because I'm running it through VNC, also the, uh, the remote access software, but I, I do believe it should run a lot quicker. There, there's some fine tuning I'm going to have to do to it. Let me see if I can zoom into uh, Panama City's map. There's Pensacola, St. Andrews Bay. All this stuff. And you can uh, actually, I think with this right here, you can put two points on a map and then, you know, turn on your autopilot and it will actually trace out that route using GPS and the compass. Like I said, this is a... Uh, they're still working on this. They, they just put this out maybe a month ago and got it working on this new new version of the operating system and the latest version of Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> but this is um this is the pass at um, Panama City. I think this is Shell Island over here or St. Andrews Park, St. Andrews State Park. We go here kind of frequently when we rent uh, pontoon boats. But uh. I think it could be a really useful program once I get all the bugs out of it and uh, get all the sensors hooked up and um, get the autopilot set up. Let me go show you uh, what I have planned to power the boat um, off the solar panels. I just got these in the other day. Yeah, guys. So here's the latest find on eBay. Um, smoking deal on these uh, trolling motors. These are uh, saltwater certified. And it's just the motor. That's you got the wires, you got the motor, no props or anything. But they're uh, saltwater certified, and they're 75 pound thrust each. And I've got two of them, and uh, got a really good deal on these. And they're pretty big, so I have to get some props for them. I have to figure out a way to mount them. It looks pretty straightforward. They got you know, got threads in there and everything. They are uh, 24 volt, and they take a total of 42 amps at 24 volts. So that equates to probably about a horsepower and a quarter a piece so I'll end up with probably about two to two and a half horsepower to propel the boat with and that's with the electric motors so yeah I'm gonna probably get the the factory props to put on here unless I find some other you know really cool props to put on here and I, I want to kind of stick with the factory uh, factory props because I don't want to you know ruin the motors by overloading them or anything but um, you gotta figure out a way to mount them and uh, maybe a way to steer. If I have two of them, I can, I can use one in reverse and one in forward and I can like rotate the boat if I have two motors on either side of the, uh, of the boat. And, um, anyway, I think I could, uh, that'll be about the max that the solar panels could supply. I'm sure I'll have to tap into the batteries, um, somewhat to run them, not just off solely off solar panels, but I might surprise myself. I'll have to see, I forgot how, how many solar panels I have over there that I'm going to have mounted and how many uh, how many watts I'm going to have but 
Yeah, this is uh, this what I'm going to use to try to propel the boat. I'm not trying to go, uh, I'd like to go six knots, but I know that's probably a joke with these. I'm, I'm hoping at best probably like uh, maybe three to four knots, hopefully at, at the best, best case scenario. But that's, that's plenty for just, you know, kind of cruising around. I mean, I'm, this is not going to be a speed boat. I'm not, you know, not going to have skiers behind it or anything. So, which brings me to battery. Um, I ended up finding a bunch of old uh, laptop uh, batteries and disassembled them. Lithium batteries, uh, 18650 cells. And you see the number on there. I charged them all up uh, to four, I think it was like 4.2 volts or tried to get them close to 4.2. I did them in a series of, of uh, six cells at a time. So that's what they ended up coming out to. And I wrote wrote this figure on them. I'm going to let them sit in a box for, you know, maybe a couple of weeks. Then go back and check the voltage on them again and uh, see if they've dropped in voltage. If they drop in voltage, I'm going to get rid of them. So I'm hoping to end up, I probably have close to 50 cells right there, which uh, I'm going to build a 24 volt battery pack out of it. And it'll probably give me, I don't know exactly, probably close to, uh, you know, 20 amp hours. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. I'll just have to see what I end up with. This is just the experiment, though. This is uh, used cells. I'm not expecting much from them, but uh, I want to see how they uh, act powering those two motors and um, in combination with the solar panels. So, you know, majority of electricity has come from the solar panels, and these are going to supplement the solar panels. And I'll have to get two um, uh, PWM um, controllers to control the motors for variable speed and all that kind of stuff, which I have, um, I have a couple of those picked out from China. And I think they're like 60 amp or 100 amp, and they make two different kinds, and they're about 20 bucks a piece. I've seen other people use them on trolling, mo trolling motors, so I know they work. So um, that won't, that part won't be an experiment. But um, ultimately, I'd like to uh, drive the thing off a joystick and have them all hooked together with a joystick, where you you know left right. You know, reverses the motors on one side and powers the motor on the other side to make the boat turn and then you know full forward and makes both motors propel the boat i don't know see if i ever get there any these days but things are coming together and i just wanted to give you guys uh kind of an update there we are this video is probably long enough right now and uh, a lot of people are probably geeked out by all this stuff so uh next video will be about building something oh and one other idea the decking on the boat I've been looking at that composite decking that they build decks on. It would be really nice to have three-quarter inch composite decking on here instead of this uh, marine grade plywood. I know the marine grade plywood is probably the way to go, but it's like $100 a sheet. The composite uh, boards would look so much nicer in like a teak and have, a, have the strips going this way, but the, it'll probably leak in between them, which is not a good idea. Plus, I think they're going to be a lot heavier than the plywood. But uh, if you guys have any ideas about that or any feelings about uh, using composite uh, you know, decking material and, uh, or any other substitutes that are, are lightweight and look like teak, I'd like to know about it. All right, I'll catch you next episode. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.